Hey guys, welcome to one of our most timely sessions. Today, we're gonna to take a look at why keeping virtual classes around is going to expand your reach and how to facilitate those classes in Jackrabbit. Now, no doubt as we go, you're going to have a ton of questions for us, especially on a session as sensitive as this. This is a great time to remind you to use the Q&A box right here in your Ignite Hub. We'll save some time at the end to go through all of those questions. Debbie and I are both here for you. Um, so please utilize those and let's get started. My name's Emily and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Jackrabbit. And that just means that I get to watch all of you take those big light bulb moments and turn them into reality and growth in your programs. I've got Debbie Neer here again. She's one of our awesome product coaches and she's here to walk us through facilitating virtual classes in Jackrabbit. And she's gonna jump in on any Q&A at the end to make sure that you leave the session with everything you need to know, we promise. One day, I promise you, you will tell the story of how your business overcame 2020 and it will be somebody else's survival guide. I want you to read that again and really take it in. It's really hard to be in the place we're at today, but I promise you in the future, you will be somebody's guiding light. You will be the survival story that they needed to hear. Really take that in. You guys have done amazing things during these closures and we all look up to you so much. No matter where you are in your virtual routines or reopening, the new question for you guys as business owners and managers definitely becomes what aspects of social distancing or this new normal are going to stick around for the foreseeable future of your business? If you did transition to an online class model during the closures, you definitely did a ton of research. And we know because we watched all the questions come in, the tickets flood, we know that you guys poured over this, this idea day and night just to make sure that that setup and that implementation was successful for your teachers and your students, and you guys did phenomenal with it. But here are four reasons that I think you shouldn't let the momentum behind your virtual program slow down just because of reopening, or even when we get to the future where closures and hybrid classes aren't a thing. I think that you finally added those supplemental resources to your programs that you always wanted to history classes, lessons, celebration of your seniors. You guys did some really creative things that I don't think you should let go. You also are able to reach a new demographic of students. You can grow your instructor base and the offerings that you provide at your program, and you are more prepared for whatever comes next. No matter what this thing throws at you, you guys are more ready than anybody else. Virtual classes during COVID went way beyond teaching classes from your living room. I know when we started, that's what we thought. Oh, we've just got teachers in their living room doing stretches, doing dances, but you guys took it way above and beyond that. We saw clients get creative with team building exercises, at home core strengthening materials, celebratory dance parties, and even some history of the sport or the arts quizzes that I thought were really creative. This is your opportunity to, to be even more creative than you were before and use this online footprint when things return to normal. So think about that. What can you bring into your programs virtually that maybe you always wanted to bring into the studio or the gym, but just time didn't allow for it? You and your students were not the only people affected by social distancing. How many parents or friends or other adults do you know that found themselves or continue to find themselves trying to patch the holes in their daily routines. You know, here in Texas where I live, the gyms opened up and they closed back just this week. So we had two weeks of gym and now I'm back to at home exercising. I look to my children's activities and sports programs to offer these classes. Why not offer classes to new groups of students or branch out even further? I mean, think about the reach that you have in your communities, in other cities, states. We even saw clients go international with their digital footprint because you can record a Zoom class and offer it on demand anytime you want. The sky is the limit this time and you should really consider how far you can take this thing. Or here's an idea. What if you've got a longtime friend or someone you respect in the industry but they don't live in your city or they don't live in your county and they don't have a line in their contract that restricts them from teaching a virtual program? Why not bring that person on as a new instructor? You could have VIP coaches, you could have new skills being taught from coaches based anywhere in the world, and you allow for these talented instructors who are really in need of flex schedules right now because a lot of them are parents, and we're about to jump into a whole other round of an e-learning model at school. So if you, got, if you know somebody or you've grown a connection with somebody in your industry that you've really admired all of these years, this is a great opportunity to reach out to them and say, 
hey, what do you think of offering a VIP class every Thursday afternoon or once a quarter and really tout almost this celebrity level um, class at your program that people will just flock to? Even you, those of you that are owners on this call, you got into this sport or this profession because you were passionate about it. And chances are you've gotten dragged so far back into the administrative duties that when was the last time you were able to teach a class because you really wanted to? If you are a you know, musical theater buff, why don't you host a virtual class on musical theater? You take back over that spotlight and see how many people register for those classes. It would just be amazing. So with that, in response to COVID closures, the Jackrabbit teams worked night and day to deliver a few fast-tracked features on top of the 2020 roadmap we were planning on delivering. And we did that to ensure that our clients were successfully communicating and teaching virtually. We didn't want anybody to fall through the cracks and you guys rose to the occasion. So I've got Debbie here on the line and Debbie, if you're ready, I would love for you to take us through a few of the creative ways that you saw Jackrabbit clients survive and even thrive during this closure. All right, guys, um, whether you're new to Jackrabbit or where you've been with us, it, it's you know opening your brand new business and COVID hit, or you've been scheduling your classes and all of a sudden you had to make the changes. And we have watched a lot of our customers do just that, as Emily said. So in Jackrabbit, if you are new to Jackrabbit, you may not realize that um, category one for Jackrabbit is how your different types of programs or classes are, are broken out. So we've added a category one as virtual. So a virtual class that way allows you to group just those together to do, do things just for those. So I can go to any one class. And I can see this information here at the bottom, excuse me you know, whether you want to show it online, but it has a category one of virtual. So that allows me to group those together just for putting just those virtual classes out that I want to break out different from my um, in-house classes. All right, you can also go through to edit all classes and make those changes quickly for a group of classes and not just on any one particular class. So if I go, and I choose my category one of virtual and I hit submit, it's going to bring up all of my virtual classes and I can see all the fields on it so I can make those changes. But here's the best part. We have an area for you to put those Zoom links or maybe it's just a YouTube video right here and even give it a label of what you want to call it. So you can pop it into any one of these or if it's just dealing with one group of classes and all of those classes are getting the same YouTube link or video, you can do it right here in this yellow row. So that will allow you to very quickly every day or every, you know, couple of hours if you need to, to change out the link that you need for those parents to see in their portal and log in for that class for their student. All right, we have a couple of customers who have done just that. I'm going to show you one and it is, um, Salem Gymnastics. It's also, I think they also go by uh, Kids U as, as well. Um, and you can see they have different types of their examples about, you know, different things for opening later or excuse me with their COVID openings. But if I go to their camps, their swim, their gymnastics, whatever it is, it's going to show their different types of classes here. So in this particular one, I'm going to go to Port Chester. You can see they have summer camp, and it has all the register links. And then they've also broken it out with their virtual camp. So they have this one virtual camp. It looks just like the same one for summer camps. It's just broken out separately so they can easily guide their parents to come just to those virtual camps. It really will save you a lot of time and save them a lot of time as well. And like I said, these links, these virtual links that we looked at, the Zoom links can be accessed from the parent portal for them to log in very quickly and let their student see whatever link it is for that particular class. All right, Emily, that's all I have. Back to you. That was awesome. There were so many creative ways that clients instituted virtual classes during the closures, and I'm excited to see how the rest of you guys bring a virtual element into your programs. So why don't we take a look? No doubt there's questions that have come in during our presentation. 
and see what you guys are thinking about all of this. Debbie, you ready? I am ready. <laughs>